Hi guys, so virtual reality is certainly a match made in heaven for the racing genre and we've tested a number of games already in the medium. Of course it is early days with VR so we do have to take that into account but certainly we are very impressed with the early tech so far and of course the experiences will only get better as the technology improves and as we up the resolution per eye which we are very much looking forward to. Of course in a racing game you're very much in a cockpit of the car which gives you that best experience with VR but also you know that cockpit experience can be translated to other games which we will be featuring on the channel. So enter Battlezone. So in Battlezone VR you pilot a tank with a range of weapons on offer. You play through a grid system and the goal is to make it to the enemy base. So choose a tank between the heavy, light and medium ones on offer initially. There are additional tanks you can unlock once you complete the game in normal and hard difficulty modes. Each tank of course has a different weapon loadout, although these can be changed up throughout the campaign. So there is the grid system and which is split into hexagons and basically your goal is to make it to the enemy base at the other end of the map, destroying enemies and upgrading your tank along the way. So maps are procedurally generated, so no two playthroughs should be the same. So here is the training mission, which just gives you a little rundown of the different enemies on offer, which include the tanks, uh, the turrets and the drones. So the enemy tanks, just like the tanks that are available to the player, range from light, medium and heavy, among others. And so each one does require a slightly different uh, approach. Uh, the lighter the vehicle the faster it moves so you know you're better off using a machine gun whereas the heavier tanks of course you're better off using some kind of missile weapon projectile so the towers you know you're better off staying at a distance and shooting them from a distance and then just avoiding the fire as you can see here you can see one of the flying enemies now which is just flying over my tank right now which i haven't quite spotted but uh, we'll be taking it out in just a moment so there's another one actually so once again you know you're looking at uh, using your machine guns for these flying enemies as you know if you're trying to hit them with a projectile weapon you know you're not going to have much luck so you know the game does offer variety in enemy types and you will have to switch up your weapons appropriately which is a nice touch the maps are pretty basic but they are functional and uh, you know you do get a decent amount of playing area so you can maneuver your tank around as you please so there are a number of different missions of course in this particular one I'm uh, tasked to hack the enemy base. Now in order to hack the base you have to stay within close proximity for a number of seconds. And of course you'll be met with enemies along the way. Now as you can see these very light uh, vehicles on the, the left they are very quick moving so do require some pretty accurate machine gun fire. Now then here I was actually shooting the wrong tank, that was actually an ally tank, the blue one there. The enemies are in red. So you know you do get allies every so often uh, which do help you in your quest and uh, you know they do range in effectiveness um, ally tanks and turrets can be repaired by staying in close proximity with them so again just taking out some of these aerial enemies so just clearing out all the enemies and turrets or oh, taking heavy fire there and bang it's all over so there you go you know if you don't concentrate you can pretty easily die in this game and uh, as I found out, it was actually a turret to my side, which I didn't spot before. So it does uh, pay to keep an eye on your radar there in the center of the screen for all the different enemies. So there is the turret that took me out there. So very sneaky. You, know, you do have to have your wits about you in this game. Enemies do pop up all around you at any time. And again, another turret there and a third turret in the background as well, which actually was surprising to see. Uh, we deal with this from distance, keeping out of the way of the gunfire before going now to the destination here. And we're going to be hacking this tower here just by staying next to it. And I'm just having a little look around now for any additional enemies. And there you go, sure enough, one pops up. So just waiting for him to appear. There you go. So we've hacked the tower at 50% of them already, so we're doing well. And again, just having a little look around for any enemies. So there we go, we've hacked the base. And that was that. Okay, so in this mission we have to destroy the enemy base. So once again, I'll be taking out a number of different enemies before hitting the base. 
and of course as you do start to destroy the base you do get additional enemies pop up so again it's a case of being very aware of your surroundings and taking out any enemies uh, as soon as they appear. So you may notice I'm using headphones. These are the Turtle Beach Stealth 350 VR headphones, which are specifically built for use with virtual reality. So they are compatible with the PlayStation VR Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. And basically they have a gap at the top. Like there's a gap between the sponging which allows uh, cables to pass through. So it is a very simple modification, but a very effective one, which enables you to play, uh, to use headphones over your VR headset. Now this is a wired headset so you will get all the uh, 3D audio which the virtual reality medium supplies which is good and these, these particular headphones are fantastic for bass and you know when you're playing in VR you really owe it to yourself to get yourself a decent pair of earphones or headphones and uh, so far my impressions on the Turtle Beach uh, Stealth 350 VR headphones are pretty decent. So they do come with an attachable mic, so you'll see in just a moment uh, I'll be putting that on and using it in the uh, online mode of Battlezone. So it's just nice and simple, if you don't want to use it you just simply take it out of the socket and away you go. So the Stealth 350 VR headphones also feature 50mm speakers of high quality and a variable bass boost. As I mentioned before it does pack quite a punch so it really does give you those really nice lows, good vibration which really does help in uh, the VR medium to just give you a little bit extra immersion especially if you're used to hearing uh, your games through a TV speaker which really does not give you the best experience in audio right then so we're approaching the enemy base here we'll just be shooting these sort of disc targets and the more you shoot them uh, the slower they rotate around the base making it even easier to hit and taking them out often spawns new enemies so you know once again you do have to be very aware because at any time, particularly when you're looking up like this, you're not actually looking at your radar. So it's very easy to be caught out by an enemy ambush. Overall, you know, having great fun with the game. Uh, I will be reviewing the title along with the headphones, which you can look out for in the next week or so. But of course, where this game really excels is when you play online with others. So here I am joining an online game with three other players. And uh, you know, online, it just amps up the action, just makes things more satisfying. You're playing alongside real players and of course you can communicate uh, through your microphones and you know teamwork in this game is absolutely crucial if you want to succeed and uh, you know lose as few lives as possible and of course the game really does ramp up the difficulty as you get further and further in but you know it is a game that you'll have to really put aside a good number of hours to really get the most out of as it is um, you know even in the short campaign mode it can take a fair amount of time so you really do have to find a nice quiet time where you can sit down for a few hours and really get uh, immersed in this VR world. Now I found it actually best to approach this game online by staying together as a unit. This way you can repair your fellow teammates and also work you know, as a team with a common goal, which is always handy. Of course, it does pay to look around as you'll see me doing here now, taking out the flying enemy. Uh, because you know, often you'll find if enough of your teammates are concentrating on one thing, you can be ambushed by enemies, so it does best to have a look around every now and again just to sort of survey the area and take out any sort of uh, additional enemies that spawn around you. Now every so often you will come across these bosses shown as a purple icon on your map there you can see in the center. Now these do require some teamwork you have to work together to take out these boss enemies because they do pack a punch. So you'll see us now just gingerly moving forward now expecting or awaiting the boss to appear at any moment. We don't know where he is at the moment. And uh, it's not long before he appears. So there you go, you see with the purple light around him, that's the guy we need to take out. So you know, you do have to be careful. Now what I do here is actually move around this object here and get a higher viewpoint, as I feel I've got a good chance of uh, landing some fire on the enemy from up higher which I managed to do there. You can see the enemy's health already down to about 40%. Now what I'm actually doing here is I'm also taking some fire from the enemy away from my teammates as well. So uh, in the end we took the boss out in no time. And there we go, almost killed him now. And there you go, that was that. 
So that was a quick overview of Battlezone VR. And like I said before, you can expect the review on Battlezone VR along with the Turtle Beach 350 Stealth VR headphones coming on the site very shortly. So do look out for that. Let us know in the comments what you make of Battlezone, whether you've played the title or looking forward to purchasing it in the future. And also let us know what you make of virtual reality and gaming in general. Of course, it is very early days and we look forward to the future of VR as it is you know, a medium that will revolutionise racing games in particular and cockpit experiences like you're seeing here. But anyway, that's it for now. No doubt we'll have more VR videos coming in the future. Thanks for watching. Well, how do you like it? Makes me feel...